Do you have a, uh, a local sort of bar in Mount Washington that you go to all the time? No. No? Well, I mean, I'm married. I don't go to bars anymore. <laughs> I love you, Beth Cooper. Go Mutants. They share a location. High school. Right. Why high school? Um, well, it could be because I'm totally obsessed with high school. Or it could be <laughs> yeah. because Beth Cooper was very successful. And then I went to my agent, mm -hmm. um, and where they said, well, we want to do another book. Let's think of another book. And I said, well, I got like five, six books I might want to do. And mm -hmm. I mentioned all five of them. She said, we can sell the one that's in high school. <laughs> my theory is, and it may only apply to me, um, being a man, I have the benefit of never actually growing up, never actually maturing in any way. And so, sure. So it's all still there. Um, <laughs> You're yeah, still yeah, that guy in high school? school? Yeah, I just wrote it the way that I would do it now, and it just turned out to sound exactly like a high school student. I was more, you know, dark and... Brooding? Uh, brooding. You brooded a lot? I brooded. If I had been handsome, it would have been so amazing. I would have gotten so many, so many girls, instead of being a fat kid. So I was at the cutting edge of anorexia. Yeah. I had all these bizarre, specific behaviors I developed. What was weird is how specific they were, and they weren't really, I, like things you can understand, like making yourself throw up and stuff like that. Well, that sounds like... That's it, bulimia, though. Yeah, well, I had that, too. So, <laughs> um, and, I, and I learned some important lessons. For you anorexics out I'm sorry there... sorry for laughing. For you anorexics out there, yeah. it's really important to lay down a base of vanilla ice cream first, because everything is much nicer coming back. It out. comes back, so that's, that's your tip right. to, to people well, out, to but, guys out there tinkering with or, or, bulimia. Or gals. So we were talking about in uh, Go Mutants all these references and not telegraphing that you're right. telling a joke. I mean, is that something you picked up with The Simpsons, or is that well, I is mean, that something you kind of honed when you were? That's writing I mean, I mean, that's just the best way to do most kinds of that kind of joke. If you if you lay, I mean, if you lay a joke like right on the line and it mm -hmm. bombs, you're dead. It's such a storied history with that show. What was it like being part of the continuum of well, of what The Simpsons is? Uh, it was terrifying at first because really? I, I just assumed I was going to get fired. And we had moved. I moved my wife out there, and we had bought a house, and I only had a thirteen week contract. Plus, you weren't a Harvard Lampoon guy, right? No. So that's actually different than a lot of the writers that come in. I've often been misidentified as being from Harvard. Although, if I had gone to Harvard, mm -hmm. um, I guess I would have just been fired from doing The Tonight Show. There's a good chance of it. Well, I would have been two years ahead of Conan on the Oh, Lampoon. Oh, yeah, you probably would have known him. Yeah. You might be without a job exactly. right now. He stole my girlfriend. He stole your girlfriend? Well, kind of. Uh, I had broken up with her, and yeah. it was six months later, but nevertheless. It still felt like a theft, but you're over that now. Yeah, I'm completely over it. Sure. I, I could barely remember it. <laughs> um, what was it like making that transition from L.A., Hollywood, writing for shows, to now you live in Baltimore, and you seem pretty settled in to writing novels. Um, yeah, well, I still write screenplays in order to pay right. the mortgage. You wrote the Beth Cooper screenplay? Right. Uh, Looney Tunes Back in Action. Lo that was you? Yeah. All right. And Duplex with Ben Stiller and Drew Barrymore. I kept being brought back. I would write, I'd write a couple drafts, and then Ben would decide that he wanted to go another way, and then mm -hmm. that would happen, and then they would decide to bring me back. And, mm -hmm. you know. It sounded like a fun process. It was fun up until uh, Danny DeVito was hired to direct it. <laughs> as far as I can tell, and I'm not sure what the legal basis for saying something like this, but as far as I can tell, Danny DeVito is a world class <laughs> um, Just like an incredible ass at least when he's a director. This is like some serious Hollywood gossip here. I, I believe that's not even at the level of gossip. I think that's a fairly well-established fact. I think he's a fairly sweet guy when he's an actor yeah. and in person. Uh -huh. But I know a number of... Uh, I was not privileged to actually be on the set of the movie because I was invited to the movie sure. by Ben Stiller's producer and then later in the day disinvited by Danny DeVito's producer. Uh, he, he called just to say that I would not be welcome. Oh. I can see why you live in Baltimore now. Larry, we got one last question we always okay. ask people when they do this interview, and it's, uh, who's your favorite hard-drinking writer? But strangely enough, I think that so my favorite authors are not hard drinkers. But well, you're ruining this, this sorry, question. Sorry, but, but I know.